Hey guys, Taki here. Today we're going to be taking a look at another accessory for the Steam Deck. This is called the Mod Case and it's made by the same company that made the Clear Case that I just did a video on. I had a lot of fun putting this together and that's partially because I was able to work with my son on that video and after showing him the footage of him putting this together, he was very adamant that we build another game <laughs> together. So this is going to be Family Week on the Taki Udon channel and we're going to use this same Steam Deck again to use the Mod Case. In the interest of full disclosure, the company sent this out to me for this video, but this is not a sponsored video. There is a link to this product in the description box below, but that is not an affiliate link. If you buy this product after clicking that link, I will make no money. If that changes in the future, I will make sure to put a message on the link itself so that way you know it's an affiliate link. So with that out of the way, let's get started. This is the mod case, and this thing comes in a bunch of different configurations, but this one right here is the base kit, and this thing goes for $30. Let's take a look at what you get inside the box. So we have two main things inside this base kit. We have the mod case itself with the front cover and the back rubber grips that go around the front and we have what seems to be a Steam Deck stand. We're gonna put that aside for now and focus on the case itself. Now I think there are a few reasons why someone would wanna buy the mod case, but the two biggest ones are probably going to be the modularity of this thing and the fact that this looks a lot like the Kill Switch case from Dbrand. Even though this thing does resemble the Kill Switch case to some degree, I like that they went in and did some of their own R&D to add some unique elements to this thing. Now, I've been a user of the Kill Switch case ever since they started shipping this thing out, and it was on my main Steam Deck up until I did my last video. Right now, I have this thing installed on my very first Steam Deck, old reliable 3D printed deck. This video is not gonna be a direct comparison against these two cases, but since I've spent so much time with the Kill Switch case, if I find some important difference between the two cases, I will mention it in this video. So let's look at what they have inside this package. We're gonna take off the hard shell case and set this aside for a moment. Inside the cavity of the mod case, we have the bracelet attachment. When I originally saw pictures of the mod case, I wasn't really sure what this bracelet was for, but now I know this thing is going to be used to secure all of the attachments to the back of the case. We'll talk about that bracelet attachment in just a moment, but for now I want to talk about the case itself. Even though the outer appearance of this thing does look a lot like the kill switch, this bottom part is entirely different. On the mod case, they've gone with a semi-transparent middle section here with a different mounting mechanism than the one that's used in the kill switch. So right now, with nothing else attached to this, we have the kickstand mounted over here to the side, and we have the main mounting mechanism for the bracelet. Installing a Steam Deck into this case is very simple. All you need to do is slide the bottom part in first, and then you're going to pull up the shoulder mount around the top. So I have the bottom part in now, and I'm gonna loop my fingers around the shoulder mount assembly, and I'm gonna pull that over the R2 and L2 buttons, and then over the R1 and L1 buttons, and then it will lock into place. So let's take a quick look at some of the features of this case now that it's assembled. As you can see, we have a power button here that's slightly raised to make it easier to press. We have a cutout for an LED light right here and a bigger cutout over here for the Type-C port. In the center, we have a big cutout for the exhaust and we also have a cutout for the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Just like the power button, we also have two raised buttons for volume up and down. In total, there are three different materials that went into this back shell. We have the main semi-transparent middle section. Then we have this smooth rubber material that surrounds it. And then once we get over to the grip, we have a different material with a textured print on it. We have some unique design decisions that went into this case, but I am happy to see that the buttons from the clear shell case perfectly work inside this one. One of the unfortunate things that I'm seeing right now is our metal plate from the clear shell case is going to be obstructed by the kickstand that we're gonna assemble on this. But even if we don't assemble it, this space isn't used for anything that important. But anyway, I'm going to assemble the stand back onto this case so we can take a look at how it operates. So as you can see, the stand is off here to the side and it's holding up the deck very well. It's pretty strong and robust, but I would have liked it a bit more if this thing could recline further than it does right now. Even though this stand is pretty good, I wish they would have came out with one that could recline a bit further than this to give you a bit more flexibility with this mod case. Now we're gonna put back on the front case so we can talk about the front cover. This thing assembles a bit differently than the kill switch case. You're gonna start off by wrapping it around the shoulder buttons and then it's going to clip into place here on the bottom. 
So I've got the whole thing assembled now, and the first thing that I'm noticing is this thing isn't really locked into place as well as it is on the kill switch case. If I tilt this up to the top, you can see that we do have some play here if I touch the corners of the back part of this, and this is kind of simulating what it would be like if this was in a bag. The same thing goes for the bottom part. When it comes to this aspect, the kill switch case is a lot better than this because it locks into place on the top and it locks into place on the bottom. This thing is not going anywhere at all. That being said, I never really used the front case of the kill switch case because I would rather have this inside the stock case that comes with the Steam Deck. This thing is really good, but it's also really expensive and I don't trust it enough to just throw this in a bag and use this for protection. It's also a lot more difficult to get on and off, but it does lock into place a lot better than the mod case does. So when it comes to this mod case, I would basically treat it in the same way. I wouldn't use this front cover as my only source of protection for this Steam Deck. I would rather just go with this off and put this inside the case that the Steam Deck comes with. If you keep the front shell on, you can't really use that case, so you'd need to buy a bigger one. But if you take off the front cover, the thing can close just fine. So the way that I see it is, this thing is really good for storage, but if I was going to travel, I would not use this front shell on the D-brand kill switch case or the mod case. We're about to finish up here on the base kit for the mod case, and the only thing that I'm seeing that they probably should have done was create a sticker like the one that you get with the kill switch. They don't need to copy the style that the kill switch case uses, but it would have been nice to get something here to protect the exposed areas of the Steam Deck. So there are a lot of different accessories that come with different versions of the mod case, and I have two of them right here. Not all of these accessories are sold individually, so it's difficult to get a price on these, but if we look at the price difference between the different mod cases, this thing is valued at $10, and this thing is valued at $20. The fan is sold individually, but this thing doesn't seem to be sold individually at this time. Let's start by taking a look at the SSD enclosure. This thing comes with a USB cable and a pretty standard SSD enclosure. The biggest difference with this one is it has a quick release tab here that you can use to pull out the entire thing very easily. Our next accessory is a fan, and this is really interesting because they're claiming that this thing can lower temperatures by up to 18 Celsius. Inside the fan package, we have the fan itself, an angled adapter for the Type-C port, and a pretty long USB cable. Now the cool thing about this fan is that it comes with an internal battery and they're claiming that this thing can last between four to six hours with four hours being the battery life that you'd expect when this thing is on full power. If we just look at the outside appearance, we have the company's logo in the middle followed by an LED light that I'm assuming is going to be used for battery status and a charging port on the bottom. On the right side, we have our power knob and this thing is supposed to feature a stepless motor so you should be able to get fine-tuned control over the fan that's inside this. Like I mentioned before, this thing is sold individually on the company's website, and even if you don't get the mod case, this thing can be used on a stock Steam Deck, and that's largely because they have an adhesive strip here behind this film. We're gonna use this on the mod case though, so we need to take this off by sliding it off, and then we're gonna expose this area here that can go on to the back of the mod case. Installing this on the mod case is very simple. As you can see, we have this cutaway here, and this is gonna slide over the center mount. Okay, push. All the way. More. Okay, good job. Okay, turn it off. Once the fan is in place, it's gonna suck out the air from the exhaust from the top of the steam deck and then push it through the fan that they have out through the top here. All of the other accessories that come with this are going to need an attachment that goes in this middle part and it's this watch bracelet right here. On one side, it's keyed so that way it can slide over this and then you can wrap whatever you want inside this bracelet to hold it in place. I only have one accessory that can use this right now and that's the SSD attachment, but I am going to show you a third-party product that can still work with this. So the first thing you do is set the watch band like this and then slide it over the main center part. And then once you have that, you're pretty much ready to go for anything that you want to put back here. I am going to demonstrate the SSD right now. So here's their SSD attachment, and it's pretty similar to a lot of other products on the market. I actually recently bought some of these, and they typically go for around $10 to $15. You can get some under that, but they do have some reliability issues. This one has a quick release mechanism right here where you just press down this tab, and then you can pull out the center column. 
Once you have that out, you have your PCB adapter with a USB Type-C port on the other end. The benefit of using something like this is you can use a full-size NVMe drive, and that is what we're going to do in this video. The kit intends that you assemble this like this, and it does work, I have tried it, but the band is a little too short to do this, so you do have to stretch this out a bit. Alternatively, you can rotate it like this and then assemble it in that way, but as you can see, we do have this cut out here, so USB cables are meant to go out through the top of this port. Just unhook the USB cable that comes with this and you'll have a double-sided Type-C cable. Lift up your deck and connect one side to the top of the Steam Deck and the other to the SSD. Now that I've got this assembled, you can see how this works. I think the main benefit to something like this is you can use very high capacity NVMe drives instead of having to resort to using an SD card or upgrading the internal storage inside this device. There are two other accessories for this mod case, but they aren't available right now. The biggest one of them is a battery, but I do want to just show you that you don't need to buy any of those accessories once you have the base kit. Basically, anything that can fit inside this strap can work, and I'm going to demonstrate that with a third-party battery. So here's an example of a battery that fits this assembly very well. This is the Storm 2 Slim from Shargeek, and it's going to basically give us double the battery capacity of the internal battery without adding that much weight to the device. Unlike the SSD attachment, this one is actually very easy to assemble because the band is more than capable of wrapping around this. I'm just going to find a snug position on this band and then lock it into place by pulling that piece of rubber through the hole, and then we're pretty much ready to go. Now I picked this battery for one reason, and you'll see that right now. This battery has an on-screen display that gives you a lot of stats like the battery's temperature and the current available charge. And if you just tilt your deck forward a bit, you can see all of that at a glance. But you will notice right now that the screen is rotated in the wrong direction. We can easily solve this by holding down the main menu button to go into the menu. And in here, you will see an option that says display direction. I'm going to hold down the menu button to go into here, and I'm going to rotate the screen in the opposite way. Now, when I rotate the Steam Deck back around, I can see all of the most important information at a glance. I can quickly see the available charge left and the battery temperature itself. I want to point out that even though we do have a battery attached to the back of a Steam Deck and the Steam Deck can get very hot under high load, we do have a decent amount of airflow between the back of the Steam Deck and the back of this battery casing. I'm not anticipating that we're going to have any issues with this much airflow for the battery temperature, but it is nice to be able to see that at a glance. I think one of the best things about this base kit is this bracelet can basically adapt to anything that you have. You can use expensive portable chargers with a lot of features like the one that I have here, or you can use cheaper ones if you're on a budget. This portable charger or other ones of this size don't add that much to the Steam Deck's overall weight. And if you're already going to be playing this on your lap, this is not anything to worry about, and it's going to keep you away from a wall for a lot longer. That brings us to the thermal test that I promised that I would do with the included cooler, and I'm going to see if their claim of 18 Celsius is valid or not. We're going to use the same test that I did in my clear shell case, so we're going to be playing Horizon Zero Dawn at 800p with no upscaling method with the graphics set. I'm going to play this for about 15 minutes or so, and then I'm going to check back to see the overall temperature of the unit and the fan RPM. Those are both important things when you're going to be evaluating something like this. All right, so I just got done testing this and I want to share some of the things that I saw. The first is the fan RPM of the internal fan. This was about 500 to 1000 RPM lower than it would be without this attachment. And the CPU and GPU temperatures throughout the entire time that I was playing stayed around 66 to 67 Celsius. The problem with trying to verify the 18 Celsius claim that they gave is that the internal fan is just going to ramp up or ramp down depending on how hot the device is. So if you attach an external cooler to this, the internal fan is going to work less. So the only real way to verify that would be to lock the fan to a set RPM and then do both tests with and without the 
the external fan. I'm not gonna do that because I don't think it's a reasonable test case for this because an end user isn't gonna do that. So what I would say is that while 18 Celsius probably isn't possible, I think eight to 10 Celsius is a bit more reasonable. Now, one of the things that I like about this is that it comes with its own battery, and that's gonna mean that you're gonna basically save a small amount of battery from not having to run the internal fan as high. I think this fan is actually pretty good. I attached a Black Shark ice cooler to the back of this metal plate after reading a comment from a viewer, and even that wasn't able to get the same benefit that I'm seeing with this cooler. I think even if you don't wanna buy the mod case, this fan is probably worth owning on its own because it can be used with the stock Steam Deck thanks to the adhesive strip that they have. Problem is that it's a bit expensive to buy by itself, so you're probably better off just getting it as part of the kit. As for my overall thoughts on the mod case, I think this is a pretty good case, especially if you wanted to get something like the kill switch, but you don't want to spend the money to do so. Now the kill switch is still a better case in some ways, like the locking mechanism of the front plate, but if you're not planning on using that front plate to protect this on its own without the use of an extra case, then this gets you really close to a kill switch case. This can do a bunch of stuff that that thing can't, and it's really cheap. So as for my overall thoughts, I think this is a pretty good value for $30 for the base pack. Out of all of the different configurations that they're offering, I think the base kit is the best if you already have stuff that you can use, like an external battery pack. Besides that, I think the fan kit is probably the next best one that I would pick up because the fan is good in its own right. That's gonna be it for this one. If you have any other questions about this case, you can leave those down below and I'll try to get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you here next time with another one. Happy gaming, everyone.